What is going on guys? Welcome to another Kerbal Space Program commentary video and this commentary video marks the beginning of a new venture that I'm trying uh, something along the lines of casual kerbling, uh, kerbling casually, um, who knows, this title is very much a work in progress at the time of recording, uh, essentially this is going to be slightly scaled back missions with a commentary track in place of sort of epic music just because my standard sort of epic SSTO or space station building videos or whatnot, uh, A, take a long time to produce and come up with mission plans for and everything like that, and also I feel like they're not really um, a sustainable thing, there's only so much you can really do in Kerbal Space Program and I feel like I'm really at the at the point where there's not much left for me to do in the game like I've made videos of every single planet um, I guess I could revisit Moho and Elu again maybe an Elu SSTO might be on the way in the future but I mean at the end of the day it would just be the same video as the Argus video going to Elu so uh, this is going to be a new venture I'm going to try where it's just uh, basically scaling back the uh, scope uh, but ultimately making the videos a little bit more relatable in the fact that you could quite easily replicate what you see here. I know the same could be said about SSTO videos, but I feel like these would be more appealing to sort of newer players that might be a bit alienated by the sort of scope of the standard videos I make. I, I don't know. I don't know. Leave feedback in the comments. So what you're seeing at the moment is the construction of a relatively low-tech ghillie rocket. There are no nuclear engines here. Very basic tech. You're, so we're essentially just using sort of tiers tier 4 and below really, and only a few from tier 4 at that. Um, so this is quite a good uh, uh, video guide, not video guide, but you know, kind of a good rocket to be using early on in your career mode saves because it doesn't need very good tech, and it's an interplanetary rocket, and it's to Gilly! Oh, so exciting! Uh, but not quite exciting enough to watch uh, at real time, so let's just fast forward to the launch. <laughs> And we are off, ladies and gentlemen, we are off to a flying start. Look at that rocket go off the launch pad. Absolutely beautiful launch. Phenomenal. Uh, Jabadiah in the cockpit there looking absolutely... <coughs> I can't keep that up for very long. Um, here we are, flying into the air. Yes, surface velocity is good. <laughs> okay, so here we are. As I'm sure you're all aware by now, um, in Kerbal Space Program, you need to be pointing about 45 degrees by the time you get to 10 kilometers up. So... That is what I'm doing now, and this rocket, if you haven't noticed, is using asparagus staging. So you do need the fuel line, which is kind of, I wouldn't say it's high tier, but kind of mid tier. I'd say the fuel line should really be a priority, though, for people in their career mode stage, just because it's so useful to be able to do uh, asparagus and onion staging, particularly when it comes to moon landers uh, or moon landers. Um, I know there's a bit of controversy about how you're meant to pronounce that name, but I know in game it's spelt mun, so I feel like I should pronounce it mun. Anyway, there goes the uh, the first set of asparagus boosters right there, and it's off to a great start. So we've got the swivel engine uh, as the main sort of uh, main stage, and then the two boosters using the reliant engine. Is that T45, T46? I'm not quite sure the actual the actual uh, letter coding, whatever that the term I need is. Um, but yeah, here we are, she's using on map view. So the mods used at the moment that, as you can see on the screen now, the Kerbin has got a beautiful appearance that is being caused by the Scatterer mod, which is filled with bugs, but ultimately I'd say is worth it just because of the fact that the game looks gorgeous with it. <laughs> and the readouts at the top are Kerbal Engineer Redux. So you can see our Delta V uh, sort of on the top on the top right to the right of the altitude gauge at the bottom of that. Uh, I feel like I'm not doing a very good job. Wait, I can just show a graphic on screen, can't I? Let's do the graphic. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, let's, let's, there we go. Where was I going with this? Oh, yes, Delta V. We need kind of about 3,000 in the top stage. I mean, you don't need 3,000 for a Gilly mission, but 3,000 is good because it gives you lots of wiggle room and you can make lots of errors with 3,000 Delta V and be safe in the knowledge that you will be able to make it back to Kerbin in one piece so uh, behind the scenes I actually forwarded, fast forwarded to a transfer window from Kerbin to uh, Eve. Scott Manley has a great tutorial on transfer windows and gravity assists and all that so please stop asking me because there's always people on YouTube that have done a much better job than I could ever do. Uh, you've already seen how incoherent, incoherent and messy my commentary style is so really I'm not the best person to be asking for tutorials on and I've done SSTO tutorials because um, I know that's kind of my, my thing, uh, if I want a better term there. Uh, I have done SSTO tutorials. Ah, oh, look at that! There go the boosters, and now we're on our penultimate engine stage. Um, yes, back to 
not talking about what's going on in the video. So yeah, the rocket is rather creatively named Gilly, uh, with an exclamation mark. And, uh, oh, maybe I should just discuss quickly. Um, now we're about a minute away from our apoapsis, we can actually start flying flat. Because there's no point wasting all our fuel gaining altitude, because we're going to get uh, the right altitude. We may as well just spend all that energy uh, working on our horizontal speed. I feel like this wasn't a very good way of saying it and might be misrepresenting what we're trying to do here, but, um, you know, bear with me here. Uh, orbital speed in Kerbal Space, Kerbal, Kerbal Space Program, I do know the name of this game, uh, is 2,300 meters per second, so, uh, yeah, we just want to get to that speed. As fast as you can, really, just keep going on our apoapsis, and usually, it depends on the craft, really, I usually go for about 80,000 meters uh, to circularize, just because that kind of gives us lots of wiggle room, uh, because obviously when you start burning, you don't instantly get into orbit, it takes like a few seconds to burn, so by not by having slightly above 70,000 it gives us some room and with SSTOs, particularly large ones like the Mark III Argus class, um, they have very very long recircularization burns so usually for that I basically just try and get the apoapsis as high as possible, 100,000 is a good goal to get. I can't actually remember off the top of my head what my most recent MUN SSTO, you know the 40 seat one, what that apoapsis was, but it was a lot. I feel like it was either 90,000 or 120,000, which on reflection is quite a lot of, uh, quite a big difference between those. But, you know, they get the idea, quite high up, high up space is high up. This is a quality, quality content. I'm very sorry for everyone that's donated on Patreon and how I'm just sort of spitting in your faces really when I'm making videos like this. But <laughs> um, I know something I can talk about. This happened to be really recently. Uh, it's not actually that exciting and it's rather annoying. It says, um, I have now been affected by the false copyright system on YouTube. That is right. I had a video, this is the stupid thing right, it wasn't even my, vi well it was my video, but it was on my second channel, a channel with 215 subscribers, and the video in question had 48 views, and it was me beating the final boss of Undertale, which for those who haven't played it, I won't, I mean I guess you could just go onto my, oh no wait, I've privatised the video now because of the whole copyright issue, but basically it was me fighting the final boss of the genocide run, that boss, oh so difficult, I highly recommend Undertale to everyone by the way. Uh, but yeah, they copyrighted ID ID'd the song, so I disputed it saying, you don't own the rights to this song, Toby Fox owns the rights. And they immediately shot that down saying, no, we do own the rights, and that was, there, that was the end of that. So then I had to actually get in touch with Toby Fox, the guy that makes Undertale, to ask, what is, what's going on here? Is this you? And he was like, that's not me. I don't know who this is that's claiming this. And I said, do I have your permission to upload gameplay footage to my channel? Because if I do, then I'll just contact YouTube and get this sorted out legally. And he says, no, you have my full permission go forth <laughs> and dispute it. So now I have filed a dispute and I've been warned that if my, uh, if the legitimacy of my dispute of the claim is, uh, well, illegitimate, I could face channel termination. So wish me the best of luck. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm losing a channel with 215 subs. I feel like it's not that big of a deal given that my main channel is kind of what I channel most of my time into. What's going on in the video to avoid that pun? <laughs> Yeah, we're just turning off Gimbal here because I didn't really like the way the thing was wobbling around, it was annoying me, and that was it. And at this point, the reaction wheels of the command pod will do all the steering for us, we don't really need that swiveling engine. Same thing again with the LV909, I do know the name of that engine. Uh, the Terrier, I think? <laughs> uh, it's a very good engine. Um, when choosing long range craft, it's a choice between kind of Nervas, or like the nuclear engines, the LV909, or the other one whose name I don't remember. Spark? Sparkler? Candle? I don't know. It's like a it's the really small one. I don't think I've actually used it in any videos. Oh wait, no, no, I did. In the Jewel 5 video, uh, the lander, after it took off from Jewel, from Tylo, the aerospike detached and it had four little engines on it. Those ones. Someone leave a comment below and you'll win um, my heart. <laughs> Yes, uh, so we are just getting our Gilly, our Eve encounter, sorry. Obviously, Eve is on an inclined orbit relative to Kerbin, and so it's pretty hard to get an exact encounter, especially if you don't really use Kerbal alarm clock effectively, like me. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to go ahead for a nice sort of burn here, and then we're just going to do an inclination correction in interplanetary space, because we can do that, because we engineered in extra delta V. 
Uh, so here we are just going through at an accelerated speed just because uh, I don't want this video to be too long. I'm aiming for 15 minutes, but uh, it really just gives out, could I really waffle on 15 minutes? Well, the answer is yes, I could easily waffle on 15 minutes, but um, could I talk in a coherent way and talk about interesting stuff for 15 minutes? Uh, the answer is no. We already know this from the uh, previous uh, 10 minutes of commentary that have been recorded so far, so... <laughs> um, yes, I was just thinking of something to talk about, and <laughs> let's talk about games, because this is a PC gaming channel, so what a, what a great topic. <laughs> This is a professional, professional right here. Um, yeah, no, the Steam sale just passed, so I accidentally my whole wallet there. Uh, let's see, I bought Undertale and beat Undertale uh, three times. Uh, two neutrals, uh, because I messed it up, and a genocide run. So, genocide run damn near killed me, but my god, uh, that was very uh, satisfying to finally beat the final boss there. Getting sidetracked here, uh, what else did I buy? Dark Souls 3. I've never played Dark Souls before, so that should be interesting. Uh, Elite Dangerous. Um, Doom and Wolfenstein and Golf with Your Friends and Rainbow Six and um, another one whose name I have I have forgotten. Uh, what I also bought recently though was a Nintendo 3DS, the new 3DS, 3DS XL. New 3DS XL. It's a really confusing naming system, I'm not quite sure myself, but um, it's the one with a little, um, the second, it's not really a second circle, circle pad, it's more of like a little rubber nipple is what, I, is what I get and it's got uh, extra shoulder buttons it's kind of got L1 and L2 uh, an R1 and R2 uh, it's not called that because it's Nintendo so it's ZR and R and ZL and L which I guess goes back to the GameCube controller having a Z button oh no in fact the Nintendo 64 had a Z button didn't it so I guess it goes back to that getting sidetracked again aren't I um, so far the only games I've bought for it are, well the only games I play at the moment are Smash Brothers and Animal Crossing. I'm kind of this, I'm a bit weird in the sense that I only like having like one or two games on the go at any one time, like I don't intend on playing any of the games I bought in the Steam sale until I finish Doom now, and then once I finish Doom I'll like move on to one other game and then beat that entire game before moving on to the next one. I'm kind of like one of those, in fact growing up I was one of those kids that would eat like just my peas and then just my chips and then like just my chicken. I wouldn't... I feel like this is a weird analogy, but like I'll, I'll do everything in like a set order. I'm very, um, uh, yeah. So 3DS games. Oh, let's talk about the commentary video. Uh, move away from my um, incoherent uh, gobbledygook. We want to get our periaptus close to Eve's surface. So oh, we can see we've got 2,858 delta V. So we got lots of delta V. And I'm not sure what I'm trying to indicate here with my... Um... Oh, that was it. Yeah, so you want to get your periaps to see that. See, get Eve's orbit. So it's kind of just a single line by getting the camera in line with it. You want your periapsis to be dead sort of in line with Eve's orbit. Gilly's orbit. What am I talking about Eve? Get Gilly's orbit so you can see, like, the plane of Gilly's orbit is in line with your periapsis. Does this make sense? Let me know if this, make, this makes sense. Um, basically, angle the camera so Gilly's orbit will be a line rather than a circle. Get your periapsis to intersect that line. This is the best wording I'm going to do. I, I ain't Scott Manley, I ain't. So uh, if you wanted quality content, um, you should pr probably leave YouTube, to be honest, um, by Netflix. But this is a different topic altogether. Um, yeah, so you want that nice U shape for when you encounter Eve. <laughs> and yes, what was I talking about? Yeah, so 3DS. I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing and Smash Brothers was the point I was trying to make. Uh, that very rambling and sort of non-specific point I was making was I've been playing Animal Crossing and Smash Brothers. Uh, Smash Brothers I'm really liking. Um, I've recently got back into Brawl because um, my Wii broke and so I thought about getting a new Wii but I thought I'd try out emulation because I wanted to try I wanted to play F-Zero in HD basically that's why I tried emulation but no it's been pretty fun actually playing around with them. Um, I bought one of those GameCube uh, USB adapters so I've been playing Brawl on the PC in HD which has been really fun. For those that have never played it, F-Zero GX is a phenomenal game. Uh, it's always been a lifelong dream of mine to play on the AX version. I still have never found it in an arcade. Uh, when I was little, we used to go to a lot of arcades when I was younger because we used to go on family holidays to sort of, uh, on reflection, uh, low quality Welsh seaside towns with a lot of arcade machines. So I think on reflection it was uh, a bit of a long shot to try and get a, try and find a... Um, 
Okay, I was about to say try and find an encounter with an F0 arcade machine. That's so you know you play too much KSP, right? Anyway, this is just very quickly how to get to Gilly, because it is quite a hard body to get an encounter with if you're not sure what you're doing. Um, believe you me, I know exactly how it feels to not know what you're doing. That's basically my whole life. <coughs> but basically what you do is you get your... You want your periapsis, basically, you want to get captured into a very um, elliptical eve orbit. You want your periapsis to only just be within E sphere of influence. Then you burn an apoapsis and get your periapsis online with uh, Gilly's orbit. And then you just place a maneuver node there. And then you can just get it so those grey encounter nodes gradually swing round until you get an encounter. That was not a very good verbal explanation, I will give you that. But I'm hoping that the visual, uh, the visual cues of the video were enough to... Uh, give you an idea of what you're going to do. I think I actually overshot the first attempt, so um, we've got to do it again. But, um, you know, who cares? Uh, here we are, just burning. And there we are. Beautiful encounter. Beautiful. So that's how you get ghillie encounters. Uh, a lot of people struggle with ghillie encounters because it is, doesn't have very much gravity, so it's quite hard to get an encounter with, but if you know what you're doing, it's dead easy. So we are just encountering with it, and what you'll find is there'll be quite a long burn, then very suddenly you'll go boom, like a, you'll circularize. Uh, I feel like uh, it's it's hard to convey into words exactly what I'm talking about here, but there you go. See how you kind of mean like you do a long burn, then very quickly circularize. It doesn't have much gravity, so once you've actually done your orbital change and have got it in line with Gillies, the actual circularization is very quick. <sighs> I need to work on commentary phrasing, don't I? <laughs> okay, so we are just drop plopping down. You can see I've made this video a little bit more abridged as time has gone on, as I realised just how long it was going to be if I left it all uncut. But here we are, just landing. When you say, when I say landing on Gilly, when you're landing on Gilly, it's more akin to sort of docking, really, like because the gravity is so low. Uh, you're basically turning the thrust of your engine all the way down to minimum and doing very small puffs of thrust to slow yourself down. And you'll find it will take quite a few attempts because at first a lot of people just bounce off the surface because the gravity is that low. But it makes it ideal for career mode science missions, not only because it's really easy to make a Gilly rocket, as I've so expertly, so expertly shown you in this video, but because like the gravity so low, you can basically get to all the biomes with the jetpack or EVA pack really easily. Uh, and in fact, look how much thrust I use to get off the surface. Like very, very little amount of thrust. If we just put there we go, and then stop. You can see we've already got like huge. So you could even do it in a rocket, couldn't you? If you just bring a few science juniors or even just lots of mystery goo units or thermometers or, or whatever. But just steering this commentary back onto the rails here, you can see what I'm doing here is, seems a little bit counterintuitive, right? I'm lowering my periapsis, essentially slowing myself down in order to get close to Eve, and really we want to be escaping to Kerbin here, so we want to be accelerating, but we're using Eve's gravity to save ourselves a lot of Delta V. This is called the Oberth Effect. And you can Google it if you're interested in learning about the orbital mechanics of it. I, I don't really have the um, uh, abilities to uh, convey how it works in an articulate or uh, in any way discernible method <laughs> using uh, the power of my commentaries. But you can see we're getting a pretty awful Herman encounter here. But you know what? Um, I just would say, you mad bro, do the present circumstances inconvenience you, mandem. <laughs> uh, like I said, we've got loads of Delta V. We're sending going to be a 710 meters per second burn. Okay, it's an awful encounter, but we've got a heat shield, uh, and really I just wanted to get home. So we could have waited a little bit longer, so we could have got a much, much cheaper burn. Uh, Turbo Pumped did a great ghillie video of how to... And that had him gain an actual real encounter with Kerbin, not just a, a crappy one like me. But, um, you know, I, I feel like this series is not about quality. This is kind of to show off what I do in Kerbal Space Program when I'm not just trying to impress people with YouTube videos. This is the sort of thing I would do in my science career mode, save uh, just ghillie missions like this. Just a fun little ghillie mission. So, um, yeah, we're just going to lower our periapsis. We don't have to be too worried about getting it aimed well because it's only going to be a small capsule with a heat shield so overheating is not going to be too much of a threat here. However we got our coming from interplanetary space so uh, re-entry heat is definitely something to be considering so we may as well use up all our fuel that we have left just to slow ourselves down a bit because uh, 4,500 meters per second is definitely a significant speed but um, yeah we should be fine because we've got that heat shield so we should be fine. <laughs> Uh, in fact, this is probably coming to the end of this commentary video. I'll probably do some really professional jump cuts here. That's what 
That's what all the kids of YouTube are doing these days, isn't it? Jump cuts and their... their jump cuts and their dubstep intros and their comic sans and all that. So yeah, we are just re-entering now and as you can see we did a fantastic job. I did a fantastic job, didn't I? Let's face it. Uh, this is pretty phenomenal. NASA, take notes. Alright, come on. When's our interplanetary mission going to happen? I've shown you how easy it is. What's the big deal, man? But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the kind of video. Let me know if you want more casual kerblings. Uh, I think I could do something like this for an Apollo star mission or Minmus missions. Anything kind of lower sort of caliber to what my normal videos would be. I thought about just making stand like sort of casual commentary tracks. Maybe I could tell some stories um, and things like that because I, I've, I'm full of great stories, me. Um, I've lived in over 10 cities in the UK. You generally in the worst possible places in those cities because I was poor and I wanted to save money. Um, London, I stayed in a pretty terrible area. Um, Leeds, I stayed in a pretty terrible area. I mean, I, I, I feel like I could go on here, but um, I don't know. These are all potential. This is all potential for the future of my channel. So do let me know in the comments if this is something you would like to see more of. And yeah. Oh, I have a Twitter account. You should go follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I feel like I got really excited because everyone has a Twitter account. I have a Twitter account. But now I have a Twitter account. So you should go follow me on Twitter. Twitter, 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 Twitter. <laughs>